Welcome to this video about bus systems, how they work and what's actually the difference to point-to-point -point wiring. Before we can understand how bus systems work, we need to take a look on how a traditional point-to-point -point data transfer is actually working. So normally you have a master device which could be anything from your PLC, microcontroller or microcomputer like the Raspberry Pi, Arduino or ESP. Beside your master you have a bunch of different participants which can be seen as the individual bus stops. Those can be sensors to measure the brightness or also a humidity sensor or even an actor so something like a relay that switching on and off a light or as well a temperature sensor or even a GPS module that's determining your position and then afterwards wants to transmit this data, this information to your master device. In a traditional point-to-point -point wiring you would establish individual lines from your master directly to your device. In our case having five devices this would result in five individual lines. But beside the lines themselves you also would need individual ports. So each device has its individual line which therefore requires its individual GPIO pin so therefore we will consume at least five pins plus the accommodating ground pin. Once we want to request information from the individual devices it's working pretty similar to individual transport. We need to talk to each device separately. So if we want to request information from all the devices we need to run to each device separately requesting the information, receiving the information and then afterwards processing the information. So that's a point-to-point -point wiring in a nutshell. But let's get rid of all those lines, ports and take a look on an alternative way to collect information, to collect data through a bus. So very similar to a public transport system you have a bus starting from the main station, our master, and then afterwards going all around the town, stopping at each individual stop, collecting passengers, aka data, and afterwards returning to the main station. All this is actually in a line or in a bus line, so one individual line, one individual cable connecting each and every bus stop, each and every device. So by chaining all those devices together we need only one wire, we need only one time to ports at the master device which is normally more than one single port. To be fair most of the buses use two, three or even more individual ports to manage their communication such as address lines, data lines and clock lines. But as soon as you get many participants, many devices in your system it becomes less cabling and also a bit more structured and easy to understand layout. But since there are no individual lines to each device anymore, we need to have a way to actually find and address the individual device. And this works very similar to a public transport system. Normally the stop has a name or with other words, an address. So this address could look like something like this, like X23, X53 or whatsoever. Those addresses don't need to count up or downwards as you go through the individual stops. This can be totally random and actually depends on your hardware. How those addresses look like is heavily depending on your bus system. The addresses shown here with x53 and so on are examples from I2C, which is actually a very common and very easy to use bus system. So let's say we want to know what's the temperature. So we will start with our bus at the main station at our master device and we will address the temperature sensor directly so we will tell our bus to go right away to x62. So basically calling a specific sensor a specific address we will get the latest measurement data load it into our bus and going all the way back to our main station and there unloading our just measured data and then afterwards processing it. The reason why I'm not closing the bus loop here is that this will heavily depend on your bus system. Several bus systems have different ways of wiring all the devices together or also sometimes multiple ways of how to have your wiring layout depending on several factors which we won't cover in this video. So to wrap it up let's take a look on the two systems side by side. On the right hand side we have the older more traditional point to point wiring which makes sense until a certain limited number of participants and on the left hand side we have the bus system 
for example iSqRSC or any other bus. While it is true that a bus system sometimes needs more than a single individual line, it's normally needing less ports and also less wiring. So a bus system is making sense if you have several participants or also if your hardware is simply only providing a bus system like I2C, one wire bus or whatever and not providing any analog or digital interface for point-to-point -point wiring. Mentioning one more hint here, in case your hardware has a fixed bus address and you want to use several of this specific hardware, you could always use the bus system also as a point-to-point -point wiring and actually running several bus lines in the same system, connecting one or several participants to each individual bus line. So if you want to go for point-to-point -point wiring for whatever reason, this is no reason for not using a bus system, even though you're losing all the benefits of actually using the bus system in the first place. If you want to learn more about individual bus systems, check out those videos here about SPI, I2C, pull up and pull down resistors and all the other topics you need to work with bus systems. Thanks for watching, make sure to be subscribed for more content around electronics and IoT and if you have specific questions or if you want to have an advanced video about bus systems in detail or a specific bus in detail, let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you next time.